Hey there, Kay here, the late bloomer, now located in Tennessee, where I am developing a mostly wooded nine acre property into a sustainable homestead. In today's episode, we pick up right after the big English ivy cleanup, where Justin is managing the burn pile before we head into a big, long garden work day. So stay tuned. Say that again. I started it in. No, I started it and it was one that I needed to pay attention to. Right, so you couldn't come get me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I could have. Not like that, it's just something that yeah. I wanted to stay No, I appreciate that. Okay, good. So this is all the uh, uh, English ivy. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll send an email to all of their friends and say, don't grow on this property unless you want to get <laughs> very hot. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay, so, all right, so what are you working on now? I'm about to go to the arbor. Okay, good. Now everyone says, don't burn poison ivy. But it turns out there was poison ivy mixed in with some of the English ivy. And it's not a good idea to burn poison ivy. It could get into your lungs. It's very dangerous. Hopefully it didn't get into mine, but now I have been suffering with poison ivy for ever since this day. <laughs> There's so many hot coals under there. So it will continue to keep burning? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops. It looks like there were some bulbs over here that got squished. Yes, there was. Well, that's what they get for growing back here. That's all <laughs> I got. Get squished that's all I got to say. They were gonna get squished Why aren't they out front where people can see them? Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, they, they were going to get squished. Anyway, so. All right, so that will keep burning and we'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. But on this day, I was still blissfully ignorant of my contact with poison ivy. And as he kept an eye on the burn pile, we went over to start working in the terraced garden. We took a look at the purple passion asparagus popping up before I launched into planting another raised bed of cool season vegetables. Full on asparagus, there's one too. Well, there are two years. Point to it so I can see where it is. Oh, okay. Right there. Right here. They're all about to just oh, wow. right out of this. Oh, you're thing. right. Right along with the nut grass. That's awesome. While I laid out the bed, Justin was shaping the new cedar arbor. We decided on a very simple design. He has some decorative touches he's still going to put on it. Basically, this was chicken wire and tea posts before, so it's a huge improvement in appearance.
How many are you going to put in? One more. Three total? Perfect. Four. Oh, four total? Yep. Oh, right, one at the bottom. Might not need the one at the bottom, but that's okay. What, you see more shoots coming out of the ground? No, I mean, like, so what you're saying? Like these. Oh, yeah. And these little guys. They got these ones. Yeah. These ones. Nope. Can train them up. Right. There's the other new one. Hey Justin, how's it going with the Arbor? <laughs> Is it all done? It's almost almost all done. Yes, uh, got the top done, got the sides done with the string. Um, the only thing really left is the bottom row. I didn't get enough to the bottom row, but other than that, it's just doing the little decorative stuff on the outside. Great. It'll be, good. It'll be done. By one o'clock, the scheduled mowers had descended upon the property and were everywhere, weed eating and mowing. And, you know, I had really waited until the very last moment to get that first mow in this year because you wait any longer and you've got knee high weeds and you encourage snakes and mice and all of that. And not to mention poison ivy. I never imagined poison ivy was growing in my yard, in my working space, but it is. And um, I'm not someone who likes chemicals in my body or in my space, and I'm all organic, but I'm gonna have to take stronger measures to beat back this poison ivy. I planned to get all of my beds done. I only got one done that day because of so much going on. As the mowers were working all around us, I had finished putting the vegetables in and Justin and I were putting the voile over the bed. I like to cover my cool season vegetables, especially brassicas, with voile, which is also known as nylon netting or tulle. People ask me where to buy it. You buy it in a fabric store. Get the widest selvage. It comes 45, 72. You want to get the widest one. And get the strongest weave. You know, there's finer ones that you make petticoats out of, but you want to get the strongest one so it will last for a couple of years, two to three years if you take care of it. The voile keeps the cabbage moth from laying their eggs on your brassicas. And because brassicas don't need flowers to be pollinated to produce the vegetable, you cover those up. Now, when you're growing plants that require bees to pollinate, then of course you can't use voile but I love to use that in the spring. Justin had made these wire hoops out of concrete ladder mesh. I've been using boil and the concrete block ladder mesh for my hoops for years in my California garden. And I just, it's one of the things I brought here. <laughs> In my first winter garden in California, I had bought some row cover cloth, the white 
cloth to protect your vegetables against frost and also against pest pressure. But they were all covered up. I couldn't see inside and see what was going on without having to open it all up. And I thought, hmm, what could I use that's a fine weave but that I can see through? And I thought of voile. You know, I have been sewing since I was 21. And I thought, I bet voile would work. And when I first went down there, nobody had even heard of this. And then later I saw another friend was using it. I can't remember if she had seen me using it or if she had thought of it. But it just seemed such a perfect thing because you can literally take the hose and water right through it. And you can see, really see well through it too. Now, I've heard that white is not as good as a color, but the reason I use red is because I love red. I have a red Prius, I have a red Chevy pickup truck, I have <laughs> late bloomer red, my mugs, I just love red. So I think it's cheerful.
you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.